Okay, so chapter two, we're going to be discussing personal management, uh, personal management and time and self-care strategies. So in this chapter, we will be discussing how to, how to identify your individual time style and personal time management strategies, discuss strategies that increase organizational skills and personal priority setting, describe early signs of compassion fatigue and burnout, describe how compassion fatigue and burnout affect nurses, the importance of caring for yourself, and identify strategies for self-care. Okay? So there's a big, uh, there seems to be a, a big lack in organization and time management skills identified by employers for new graduates um, as areas for improvement and assistance, which would make sense, especially because we, in the previous chapter, we heard that it takes two to three years for you to get better at your organizational and time management skills. So this is not abnormal, um, but it's, it's just a reality. So balance is the key. So making time to meet individual, family, and professional goals and needs. Putting off assignments may lead to increased anxiety and more stress. So procrastination is not your friend in nursing or management in any kind. So what is meant by right and left brain dominance? And where is my brain? Well, left brain traits. This is kind of some fun facts. So left brain traits, you seem to process information in a sequential, linear manner. You want to know the rules and play by them in extreme forms, um, overworked and rigid. So right brain traits resist rules and schedules. They're more creative and flexible thinkers. Um, extreme forms, they fail to meet deadlines and cause causes a bunch of guilt. So I would say I'm more left brained, which I think is a good quality to have in a nurse. Um, just because I don't like to mess up. So considering the characteristics of left and right brain, what side of the brain do you think is more dominant for you? Like I said, I said left. Mm -hmm. So managing your physical environment. Using the ABCD system, which um, when items cannot be handled right away. So this is a new system I've never heard of. So there's A, B, C, D pile, and each pile just indicates priority. So A requires action as soon as possible. B, necessary, but can wait for right now. C, can wait until you get it or until it can be done, discarded. And D, can be immediately discarded or, or delegated to someone else. So delegation is a big thing that we as nurses, I find, still struggle with just because you don't want to put your work on some, off on somebody else. But that's what we do as RNs, especially in a management type position or as a charge nurse type position. Because if you're not free to take to help other people when they need you, because you have so many tasks, you're kind of you, you, you're hindering yourself and your staff. So someone told me that one time, and that was a really really valid point. Just taking on so much because I didn't want to, I wanted to be more of a team player, not realizing that I couldn't be a team player if my plate was so full that I couldn't get anything done. So just that's just a little bit of personal advice. So managing uh, my physical environment. So managing the phone systems, um, focusing on business, being polite, kind of beginning and ending your conversations politely, um, and all the email, texting and social media. So restrict work or school-related communications to one account. Um, delete, you <laughs> delete your key. Use your delete key aggressively. Um, that's fun. Um, just get rid of all the junk email that you don't need. Um, make sure you include class number or title and, and subject lines so when you're communicating so that way you know right off the bat what you're going to be removing and deleting or keeping or whatever that you might need. Okay, So managing your physical environment, um, how to manage my calendar, only schedule what's realistic. You can't you know, take on too many tasks in one day and you're going to miss something. So review your schedule, expect unexpected surprises but um, try to avoid them, but you're going to have them. Uh, color code appointments, leave extra time, and don't forget about personal time. It's very, very important because if all you do is nurse and manage, you're, you're going to lead to burnout. So managing tasks. How do I deal with procrastination? So you need to set priorities, eliminate wasted time um, by taking too many social phone calls, Break a task into small steps. 
establish multiple specific goals, one goal at a time, review your progress, reward yourself, avoid doing others' works, delegate your tasks when possible, and be realistic. So managing others, learn to say no, practice assertive communication, try to limit your time when people complain, avoid these individuals online, outside of work, you know, through social media and, and in person, um, just because you don't want to be around negative people all day at work and all day in your personal life as well. It's just um, negativity can just breed more negativity. So managing others, and what about delegation and time management? Don't handle everything personally. Identify tasks that can be completed by others. Okay, so setting your goals, deadlines, we talked about that. Keep going, review your lists, reward yourself, don't waste time thinking that you failed, look at mistakes as learning experiences. <clears throat> so what personal management technique would be most effective for you? Calendars, really not my thing. Um, a, B, C, D system. I don't really have stacks of anything. So I guess not procrastinating, color coding items, and getting rid of clutter. I would have to say C is more of how I operate. And E, I don't like clutter. I don't like to procrastinate. If I don't get it done right away, I will stress about it for a long time. And that to me is just not fun. <laughs> okay. So here's just some management skills for like online courses, which applies to both you and I. So make sure you print your syllabus and place deadlines on your calendar. Prior, prioritize you know, your first course meetings. Identify how to contact your instructor and schedule online office hours. Schedule weekly times for logging into your class. Develop um, support groups. Establish a directory on the computer. And in this course, you know, you have your schedule. It's already up and ready for you to print, so you will know, like I said, the dates, the times, everything for the entire um, seven-week course for this program, which is really helpful to know. Self-care. How to take care of your physical self. So taking care of yourself for nurses is a, a very, very hard thing because we, we go into nursing a lot of times for our desire to help other pe people. So helping yourself is very hard. So self-care is the practice of engaging in activities that promote a healthy lifestyle. Keep you thriving in nursing instead of just surviving. Okay, and burnout. What behavior have you seen that indicate you uh, indicate to you a nurse was experiencing burnout? Just did the basic care, complained about patients who needed care, took long breaks, did not exhibit any interest in assisting students, told a student that nursing was not a good job to have. So I've heard these, and I'm probably guilty of saying a few of these, complaining about patients. Um, burnout is a very, very real thing. After working in the uh, nursing corps for almost 11 years, you do feel some of these things. And learning how to step away and take care of yourself is a very hard thing. But if you don't, it's it will burn. You will get burnout, and you will eventually not like what you're doing. So is burnout inevitable for nurses? Here's some warning signs. Um, irritability, weight changes, headaches, fatigue, insomnia, negativity, cynicism, angry outbursts, being self-critical, all those things are early signs of burnout. And if, and as a management or a manager, as a higher up, as a charge nurse, if these things are repetitive in your staff, then those are early signs of burnout and education, how to reduce those things, how to take care of yourself, how to be in a positive environment probably needs to start whenever these feelings start getting exhibited. So what activities do you enjoy the most? And do those. Movies, exercise, which is not something I like to do the most. Dinner with friends, um, religious or community activities, reading. So dinner with friends sounds good to me. Feeling powerful. So this is good. Feeling powerful leads to positive um, energy, leads to a positive aspect of nursing. It um, makes making a good grade on a test, good decisions, people that support you, your family's happy with you. Um, so feeling powerful can come from all of these things, but it also is very, very positive in your life. And I just moved a slide. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs>
Where did I need to be from? So here's some suggested strategies for self-care based on a holistic self-assessment tool. So not having our life and state in balance, not having a vision for the future equals a state of poor self-esteem. Okay, so you need to get proper nutrition, healthy weight, sleep, quit um, smoking, limit alcohol, um, exercise on a regular basis, and form, take form in some relaxation, which I personally like yoga and I like massages so those are things to maybe look forward to okay physical exercise laughter mental exercise um, disconnect from technology relationships good relationships having positive um, thoughts about your future those are all good okay what are my choices and how to exercise them? Take a proactive stance. Act responsibly towards yourself and others. Okay. Those are some personal time management type things. How to control your environment. How to take care of yourself. Time management. There's not any. We can't make minutes last longer in the day. But learning how to manage your skills from early on. Like I said earlier, get to work early. Get your day set up. Get your thoughts set up. Set your goals for the day. Don't procrastinate. Those are all very helpful tools. Um, physical activity, social activity, removing yourself from work. You shouldn't live and breathe and eat work and talk about work. All those things um, are things that you can do to prevent burnout and to have a better management with your skills. Um, so... So before we can act responsibly towards others, we must first act responsibly toward ourselves. This ex improves self-acceptance and love. And so when you get your personal life organized, you'll become effective in getting priorities accomplished at home as well. When you have your school organized, you'll have more effective study and be less stressed. So whenever you have your work environment organized and clinical setting is scheduled, you become more of an effective nurse and you begin to have time to perform the type of nursing care that you were taught.